This episode is brought to you by IVP. The words of Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech have become enshrined in U.S. history. But since then, what has happened to the struggle for freedom for the African-American community? In his classic IVP book, Free at Last, author Carl Ellis offers an in-depth study of African-American dignity and liberation. With a new preface by Dr. Ellis and a new forward by rapper Sho Baraka, the book proves just as relevant today as when it was first released. And as a listener of this podcast, you can receive Free at Last for 25% off when you use the promo code IVPOD25. That's IVPOD25 at IVPress.com. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth Table. Presented by Innervar City Press. The Daily Audio Bible Podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson and Akemeni Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes, that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading, 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 17 through 25. Conflict with the Philistines. When the Philistines heard that David had been designated king over Israel, they all went up to search for David. When David heard about it, he went down to the fortress. Now the Philistines had arrived and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. So David asked the Lord, Should I march up against the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord said to David, March up, for I will indeed hand the Philistines over to you. So David marched against Baal Parazim and defeated them there. Then he said, The Lord has burst out against my enemies like water bursts out. So he called the name of the place Baal Parazim. The Philistines abandoned their idols there, and David and his men picked them up. The Philistines again came up and spread out in the valley of Rephaim. So David asked the Lord what he should do. This time the Lord said to him, Don't march straight up. Instead, circle around behind them and come against them opposite the trees. When you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the trees, act decisively. For at that moment the Lord is going before you to strike down the army of the Philistines. David did just as the Lord commanded him, and he struck down the Philistines from Gibeon all the way to Gezer. First Chronicles chapter 14, verses 8 through 17. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king of Israel, all the Philistines marched up to confront him. When David heard about it, he marched out against them. Now the Philistines had come and raided the valley of Rephaim. David asked God, Should I march up against the Philistines? Will you hand them over to me? The Lord said to him, March up. I will hand them over to you. So they marched against Baal Parazim, and David defeated them there. David said, Using me as his instrument, God has burst out against my enemies like water bursts out. So that place is called Baal Parazim. The Philistines left their idols there, so David ordered that they be burned. The Philistines again raided the valley, so David again asked God what he should do. This time, God told him, don't march up after them, circle around them, and come against them in front of the trees. When you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the trees, then attack. For at that moment, God is going before you to strike down the army of the Philistines. David did just as God commanded him, and they struck down the Philistine army from Gibeon to Gezer. So David became famous in all the lands. The Lord caused all the nations to fear him. 1 Chronicles chapter 11, verses 4 through 9. David conquers Jerusalem. David and the whole Israelite army advanced to Jerusalem, that is, Jebush, 
the Jebusites, the land's original inhabitants, live there. The residents of Jebus said to David, You cannot invade this place. But David captured the fortress of Zion, that is, the city of David. David said, Whoever attacks the Jebusites first will become commanding general. So Joab, son of Zurai, attacked first and became commander. David lived in the fortress. For this reason, it is called the city of David. He built up the city around it, from the terrace to the surrounding walls. Joab restored the rest of the city. David's power steadily grew, for the Lord of Heaven's armies was with him. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verses 4 through 13. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah for seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned for 33 years over all Israel and Judah. David occupies Jerusalem. Then the king and his men advanced to Jerusalem against the Jebusites who lived in the land. The Jebusites said to David, You cannot invade this place. Even the blind and the lame will turn you back, saying, David cannot invade this place. But David captured the fortress of Zion, that is, the city of David. David said on that day, Whoever attacks the Jebusites must approach the lame and the blind, who are David's enemies, by going through the water tunnel. For this reason, it is said, the blind and the lame cannot enter the palace. So David lived in the fortress and called it the city of David. David built all around it from the terrace inwards. David's power grew steadily, for the Lord God of heaven's armies was with him. King Hiram of Tyre sent messengers to David along with cedar logs, carpenters, and stonemasons. They built a palace for David. David realized that the Lord had established him as king over Israel and that he had elevated his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. David married more concubines and wives in Jerusalem after he had arrived from Hebron. Even more sons and daughters were born to David. First Chronicles chapter 14, verses 1 through 2. David's prestige grows. King Hiram of Tyre sent messengers to David along with cedar logs, stonemasons, and carpenters to build a palace for him. David realized that the Lord had established him as king over Israel and that he had elevated his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. David brings the ark to Jerusalem. David again assembled all the best men in Israel, 30,000 in number. David and all the men who were with him traveled to Bala in Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, who sits enthroned between the cherubim that are on it. They loaded the ark of God on a new cart and carried it from the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were guiding the new cart. They brought it with the ark of God from the house of Abinadab on the hill. Ahio was walking in front of the ark, while David and all Israel were energetically celebrating before the Lord, singing and playing various string instruments, tambourines, rattles, and cymbals. When they arrived at the threshing floor of Nakon, Uzzah reached out and grabbed hold of the ark of God, because the oxen stumbled. The Lord was so furious with Uzzah, he killed him on the spot for his negligence. He died right there beside the ark of God. David was angry because the Lord attacked Uzzah. So he called that place Perez Uzzah, which remains its name to this very day. David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How will the ark of the Lord ever come to me? So David was no longer willing to bring the ark of the Lord to be with him in the city of David. David left it in the house of Obed Edom, the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed Edom, the Gittite, for three months. The Lord blessed Obed Edom and all his family. First Chronicles chapter 13, verses 1 through 14. Uzzah meets disaster. David consulted with his military officers, including those who led groups of a thousand and those who led groups of a hundred. David said to the whole Israelite assembly, If you so desire, and the Lord our God approves, let's spread the word to our brothers who remain in all the regions of Israel and to the priests and Levites in their cities, so they may join us. Let's move the ark of our God back here, for we did not seek his will throughout Saul's reign. The whole assembly agreed to do this, for the proposal seemed right to all the people. So David assembled all Israel from the Shechor River in Egypt to Lebo Hamath to bring the ark of God from kiriath Jerim. David and all Israel went up to Bala, that is kiriath Jerim, and Judah to bring up from there the ark of God the Lord, who sits enthroned between the cherubim, the ark that is called by his name. 
they transported the Ark of God on a new cart from the house of Abinadab. Uzzah and Ahio were guiding the cart, while David and all Israel were energetically celebrating before God, singing and playing various stringed instruments, tambourines, cymbals, and trumpets. When they arrived at the threshing floor of Kidon, Uzzah reached out his hand to take hold of the ark because the oxen stumbled. The Lord was so furious with Uzzah, he killed him because he reached out his hand and touched the ark. He died right there before God. David was angry because the Lord attacked Uzzah, so he called that place Perez Uzzah, which remains its name to this very day. David was afraid of God that day and said, how will I ever be able to bring the ark of God up here? So David did not move the ark to the city of David. He left it in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. The ark of God remained in Obed-Edom's house for three months. The Lord blessed Obed-Edom's family and everything that belonged to him. New Testament reading, Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Jesus and little children. Now people were bringing little children to him for him to touch But the disciples scolded those who brought them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not try to stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. After he took the children in his arms, he placed his hands on them and blessed them. Luke chapter 18, verses 15 through 17. Jesus and little children. Now people were even bringing their babies to him for him to touch. But when the disciples saw it, they began to scold those who brought them. But Jesus called for the children, saying, Let the little children come to me, and do not try to stop them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. Holy God. Ooh, when we read that passage in the Old Testament, oh God, in both um, Chronicles, oh God, and Samuel, oh God, about the Ark of the Covenant, oh God, and, and Uzzah and David's company taking the Ark of God and trying to um, take it up, oh God, to the palace, oh God, and in, in seeing, oh God, that the ark, oh God, was about to stumble because the, well, because the oxen had stumbled, the ark would have fallen. Uzzah reached out his hand to keep the ark from falling. And that angered you and you killed him right then and there. Ooh, when we read passages like that, we struggle, God. We struggle because we don't know. <laughs> we are just thinking, oh my goodness, like that's, that's, that's something I probably would have done, you know, trying to protect, protect you, oh God. And it's hard to understand the reasons why we know, oh God, that you are holy, oh Lord God. And we know that you dwell in unapproachable light, oh Lord God. And I thank you, oh God, that oh, that because of Jesus' perfect sacrifice, we can come to you as we are, oh God, that we can come boldly to your throne of grace, oh God, just as we are, oh God, knowing that we won't be struck down, knowing, oh Lord God, that your um that your anger and your wrath will not burn against us, oh Lord God, because of what Jesus has done for us, O oh Lord. Would you help us, O oh Lord God, when we see passages like this and we don't know what to do, we don't we don't know the interpretation, we don't we don't know what to make of it, Lord. Would you help us to trust um that your ways truly are higher than our own, O oh Lord God, and that we would just exercise humility, O oh Lord God, and gratitude and bask in your grace and in your mercy, O oh Lord God. Help us to be grateful to be on this side of the covenant, O oh God, the grace side to be On this side, O Lord God, of redemptive history, on this side behind the cross, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, O Lord God. It could have gone another way. It really could have gone another way for us, O Lord God. And I thank you, O Lord, that when we read passages, O God, about in the New Testament about Jesus and the little children, O God, that we might, you know, we have maybe fleeting thoughts on our thought. Oh, if, if, if I was one of those little kids who got a blessing from Jesus, oh, my life would just be oh, so different. But God, I just, I realize that we do have a blessing from Jesus. We, we are in Christ. 
we, O oh God, you see us as little children, O oh God. We are called uh, no longer enemies, O oh God, but we're children of God. You've given us the right to become children of God. And that's what we are. And we cannot become uh, uh, um, uh, children of God and brought into your kingdom unless we have and accept the message of the kingdom of God like children. Unless we have that childlike faith that embraces the totality in the sovereign reign of the Lord Jesus Christ over our lives. So would you restore childlike faith to those who have become skeptical, to those who have become disillusioned by the faith, to those whose um, the cares of this world have choked out their faith? Would you give them childlike faith? God, for those who um, uh, who are, are in need of a fresh wind, oh God, would you restore to them to joy their salvation and that would you also give them a renewed sense oh god of faith in Jesus Christ oh god and give them give us all childlike faith oh god that looks to you for any and all things oh god i pray this in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus amen we pray this time of getting the word with Truth Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag Get in the Word and hashtag Truth's Table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth's Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee. Got something to say